talking about an iterative method for empirical likelihood using basic functions. And first I'll just uh, give a brief introduction of empirical likelihood and then talk about uh, the existing method that um, I wish to improve. So they, they use empirical likelihood with a piecewise constant and we talk about the properties, why I'm interested in empirical likelihood and then the issue I have with it. And then I decided to, to, instead of using piecewise constant, I would prefer to use a spline basis um, in order to reduce the number of parameters I'm estimating. And I think originally my, my talk was talking about augmented Lagrangian and um, that, that I'm still planning to apply that to this method. I think um, it, it does not make a huge difference currently. I, I have tried it and um, if you are interested in it, we can have a look later maybe. But um, yeah, I, I think I will definitely probably use augmented Lagrangian in the spine basis as well, um, just to ensure that my additional constraints are satisfied. Okay, so um, the basis of empirical likelihood um, was established by Owen in 1988. And the main idea is that a kind of semi-parametric or non-parametric method which allows us to perform hypothesis testing without needing to assume the distribution of the data. So, um, and then we can also um, extend this to um, other areas. So we can also, if we, if we do have additional ideas about the data, we can include that information using estimating equations or side constraints. Um, so it's a very powerful technique. Um, so first we just define the empirical CDF. Uh, it just is it's a step function increasing by one over n at each data. And from there we, we also introduce the non-parametric likelihood. And the non-parametric likelihood we can see here is just um, the product of the, the, the PDFs. This is kind of like a PDF, it's um, the difference between the, the CDF at the X point and just before that. So it's, um, that's how we've defined this. And it's been shown that this um, non-parametric likelihood is maximized by the empirical cumulative distribution function. Okay, so it's a, it's a useful idea to, to use this. So um, we, we have this probability, pi, which we just call the probability that x takes a particular value. And this is how we form the empirical likelihood. We, we take the product of these, these densities. And uh, because they're probabilities, we, we require that the sum of them equals one. And we're interested in the, the likelihood ratio of this. So um, we said before that the non-parametric likelihood um, was maximized by the empirical distribution function. So that's just one over n. So when we take the ratio here, we're just dividing by one over n and we get this ratio. And it, it's been shown that we, we don't worry about um, ties in the data, the xi's do not need to be distinct. So the method still works. And yes, if we've got a likelihood ratio, then we can perform hypothesis testing and create confidence estimal, uh, confidence intervals for estimates of our parameters. Um, so the Wilkes theorem, it, it does extend here to um, the, the empirical likelihood. We, we do find that this, um, 
ratio should also follow a chi-squared distribution, which is what we use to construct our confidence intervals. And the, the, the simplest example for um, performing empirical likelihood is using um, a constraint on the mean. So we've included this as a um, constraint here. And this will be the, the function we wish to maximize. We want to maximize in terms of the PIs, which we wish to estimate, as well as any other parameters, in this case, the mean. Um, so, yep. So, to maximize this, we, we have to think about um, the KKT conditions. Um, we can see that we had the condition that the, the PIs, they have to be positive. Um, so, we just, we just take this and um, because it's an inequality constraint, we require these conditions. And we can just apply this into our um, Lagrangian function um, as so. So we can just take the product of PI times the likelihood, I mean, fa times the first derivative of the likelihood, and um, set this equal to zero and solve this. And um, you may see why later, but we, we also um, take the sum of this, and it's still going to be zero, so we can solve that. Yep, so this is, this is just what Owen um, has done previously, and he, he used the method of Lagrange multipliers, and you can see here how he's sent out the likelihood, and yeah, if we want to solve PIs, we can just solve the first derivative, First, we wish to solve the um, Lagrangian constraint. So we've, we can solve lambda directly in this case um, because we, we do only have this function on the mean. Uh, when you, you do include other um, more complicated examples, um, such as regression, um, it, it does take a little bit more work and maybe we can't solve them directly. But in this case, we can we can just solve um, the mean directly and update it accordingly. And so gamma can just found, be found by a numerical search. And we we find that the pi should um, be equal to this. And um, yeah, so the way this holds, well, gamma needs to be um, in a set of in a particular range, in order for PIs to be positive. So that is um, one restriction here. We, we find that if the mean is in the convex hull of the data, um, that is, in the simple case that it's just within the range of the data, then I think this will always find a, a result here, which works. But there are cases where um, PIs do have some problems. Maybe the PIs, many of them are close to, very close to zero, and others are very large, which um, does not really make sense. So we're, we're trying to improve this method. And we can see how um, one way um, to update gamma, so this is the way that I, I'm using, uh, which is solving x i times p i and solving this equals to zero. And you can see how we can update this now. We, we can just first get initial estimates for, for gamma, lambda, and p i, and then just update this iteratively with the new, um, at each step, with the new solution. And just continue updating this until convergence. So, yeah, that's that's the piecewise constant method, and I guess the reason why I I I hope to to do a spine basis is, um, yeah, it will reduce the number of the parameters. The PIs here are kind of parameters. 
that we need to estimate. Um, and yeah, I think a, a more smooth method, if it handles the data well, will be better. Okay, so this is for the mean example. And yeah, I might just mention that yeah, here they haven't used any augmented the grand um, method yet, but yeah, applying that, it, it can kind of help enforce the constraints here that um, sum of pi is equals one and so on. Okay, so this is how we um, get our splines um, basis functions. And there is just a typo here that um, this should be the the small side. Um, and when we take the sum, that should equal one. So yeah, now we have instead of PIs, we have spines. So we have a linear combination of the spines, our thetas, and they should be positive. And we can still um, put an estimate equation for the mean here in terms of our splines, where b is this the mean of the spine. Um, so we're using n splines in particular because um, it already has this condition satisfied for the spine. So these theta's will be positive, and the integral of the splines will equal one. So they're inherently in the 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 constraints are inherently satisfied. Okay, so this is our likelihood, and we're just using Lagrange multiplies again, and applying KKT and solving again. So um, we can also find a simple solution for lambda and update that accordingly. And it's just the same method that um, we're using here. And same for gamma. Um, again, just multiplying the theta instead of pi by the con first constraint. OK, so we decide to update the thetas using a multiplicative iterative algorithm, which is just a um, kind of gradient method, you just use your first um, your first iteration, your initial estimate, and update that by the, the fraction here. We've got two parts, which we take both to be positive. So we split the um, first derivative into t the positive and negative parts, and we ensure that both of these um, yeah, will be positive. So um, we've got here the, the positive part and the negative part. So we've just defined these, these square brackets here as positive and negatives. And then you update the MI algorithm according to this formula. And we want to um, add here a, a step size which will ensure that um, we move in the correct direction. We don't, we don't overstep. We, we want a step size which ensures that we are increasing the likelihood. And then we have asymptotic properties. So for my method, I haven't been able yet to prove Wilkes theorem, but um, I have, I, I kind of do have an idea that it should hold. We, we think that there's no reason it shouldn't. But there does look like some deviation when I look at um, my examples that I'm not that close to um, a chi-squared one distribution, which is what I should look like for um, the simple case here. Um, I suspect maybe there is some bias issue that we haven't really figured out yet. But um, yeah, we are still working on this. And uh, why am I here? So obviously, I, I wish to um, implement, implement my method as an R package. 
and um, yeah, that's why I'm here. So, any questions? Uh, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. No. So the x's do not um, need to be discrete. Um, I guess the question was that uh, we have this idea that the x's should be discrete, um, but no. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I guess. Um, yeah, the the PIs are going to be probabilities, but I don't think like um, these are kind of like densities, not not directly um, probabilities. So when we take the the likelihood here, we're we're taking the product of these densities. Yeah, it's really a density. Yeah. Yeah. But but it's simple to think of it as a probability. Yeah. Yeah. So the MATLAB was the the graph was generated in MATLAB. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, the main reason is it's um, easier to implement for other users. So ideally, other people would would like to use the method, and it's more easily distributable using R. Yeah. 